Yeah, you know what it is, y'all. This your boy M. Greasy, aka Memphis Bleak, and you watching Montreality. You know what it is. KG, get low. G. I was wild. At first I listened, but then as I got older, I was like the, the clown in the class. We, we, we just made fun of the teacher. I had a lot of fat teachers I used to fall asleep on the classroom, so it was nothing to do but just wild out. I never had a job. My first job in my life was rapping, like that's it. I never, never had a summer youth job, nothing. Never worked at McDonald's, nothing. You know what I mean? Right now, I got something what you would call like a job. Doing this Duce marketing thing, you know what I mean? New cognac we got coming out, the big homie. And it's called Duce, so you know, I'm working on the marketing for that. This is my first taste of job. And it's not really even job, it's my homie. Same thing I did for Rockaway, you know what I mean? It was, I didn't come up with it. I guess Jay and the owners of Bacardi was basically chefing up this deal for like a year, two years in the making. And then once I found out about it, I had a meeting with them and I was just telling them like, yo, let me, let me rep this. Let me be one of the faces of this. You know, I, I put it all in the music, take it everywhere around the world, the clubs, whatever. And he was just like, okay, we're going to build a marketing team. You part of it. Let's go. So it, it was just something like spontaneous that happened. I wasn't there for the creation of nothing. But what I do, what I can tell you is way smoother than Hennessy, tastes way better than Remy Martin, go down better than Cavassier, and we here, you know what I mean? We gonna do our thing. Do say, baby, deuce if you can't pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, we did the relaunch, in, the launch in New York City, you know, first. It came out, hit all stores in New York, September 1st. So, you know, as we speak right now, we working on different cities, different states. Our house, I moved my mom's out the projects, bought a two-family house for me and my mom's. Then I got a, a separate crib for me and my lady. So, just went like that. Then, of course, the cars, the jewelry, all that follows. Hard work. Determination, hard work, like staying at it, perfecting your craft, never giving up, never listening to what critics say, because you know on the way to the top, everybody is not going to agree with what you do, so you just got to stay true to what you believe in and just hard work. No, I'd rather like, I, I'd rather watch the movies, but would I read a book? Yeah, I read a few books here and there, but I'd rather watch the movie, I'm be all the way honest. <laughs> I'm in the age. Perfect title for it, right? <laughs> A pimp. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, I used to draw a lot of artists, you know what I mean? Flipping gymnastics, all that type of stuff. Of course, I'm black, so you know I play basketball. I get busy. <laughs> ah, going broke. That's it. Uh, the process is on is on hold. You know, I was in album mode trying to do this record deal thing for a minute, but then I thought for a minute I don't really want a record deal no more. I want a distribution deal so I could give a few artists, you know what I mean, the opportunity to taste what I taste in this industry. So right now the only projects I'm working on you should be checking out for is KG3. You know, that's coming out, Kush Gang Part 3. I don't have a date yet, but I'll let you know I'm about 10 freestyles in on that. Then you could be looking out for the movement, too. I'm also about 8, 9 joints in on that. That's all original songs. And that's right, you know, that's it, man. I say I'm going to be dropping that real, real soon. As soon as the weather get cold, I'm going to heat it up. Nothing really, man. We, we, we always been up front and personal. From the streets is watching, the backstage, to fade the black, to state property, to everything, man. You see our beans bust clue lip up. We could have edited that out. Everything is up front. Like, you see how these beat the bus driver up? Like, it's really nothing we hide. We ain't skeletons in the closet crew. Like, everything is on front street. Last time I spoke to Beans was probably like three years ago, four years ago. And from what I know from that conversation, everything was cool. He's still people's, that's my brother. But then, as you know, he did a few interviews and things. We said a little different, you know, but I don't take nothing personal because at the end of the day, I know I know him personally, so I know that wasn't the real him speaking, so I don't take it personally, you feel me? And as for him recently getting locked up and all that, I just feel like it's a shame, man. Like, there's, there's so much talent is just being wasted, man. Like, I feel bad for him, for real, because that's my dude, and I know how talented he is, and I know the potential, what he possessing it is just going to waste. <laughs> Stamp of approval, you gotta give it to Drake. We gotta give it to Drake. Wayne been in the game just as long as me, so I ain't with that. He a new cat. He be for that. He know. 
<laughs> so he ain't new. He been putting it down for years. Gotta give it. I ain't gonna front. Young money. You gonna give it to Drake, Nicki, Ross, Two Chains, Big Sean, and then of course Meek Mill's. Like it, that, the big crew is putting it down. The YM, YMCMB, MMG. They putting it down. But then you got J Cole. J Cole is, is it's nice, man. So. I met J. Cole back in the day. He was managed by a friend of mine in the studio in um, Manhattan before J. even met him. So I knew J. Cole for about two years before J. met him. So, like, you know what I mean? We always been cool. Oh, man. Of course, Frosted Flakes, Cocoa Puffs, and Fruit Loops. <laughs> See my lady over there like this, yeah? <laughs> That's a hard one. Because I got to go back in the day to like the GoBots and Autobots, Transformers and stuff like that. But I would give it up my all-time favorite, no lie, Voltron. This was young, man. This was when I was young, when I was out there, you know what I mean? Thugging hard. Say, I'd rather be wanted for murder than not be wanted at, at all. So get law, get out the game. And you know, that that was my young mentality when I really felt that way. I'd rather be wanted for murder than not to be wanted at all. Like, But if you ask me that question now, I don't feel that way. And I'm not a real fan of the tattoos or inking your body up all crazy. Because some of these people not like me. I got a career. These people got to go fill out applications. It's getting crazy out there. <laughs> so, just want to be real with it. People know my story, man. Just know, know what I'm about. Know what I've been through. What I like, what I don't like, and just just know about me, man, the real me. That's it. I feel like in music now, there is no message about individuals. It's just everything that you could read in the Raw Report or pick up in the Bloomingdale's magazine. That's all the music is now. It's the Raw Report and the Bloomingdale's magazine. It's nothing. You don't really know where people from, what they've been through, what they downfalls were, what they what they don't like, what they do like. They just tell you what we like. And that's it.